up guys? So we're at Hyperfest at BIR and I was just featuring another car, minding my own business. And then my guys, Lewis and Tyler, came up to me, started yelling at me. They started yelling at me and they're like, you have to go now, right now, to feature this Volkswagen R32. And I was like, all right, cool. I don't know anything about what I'm about to feature. I just saw it as I pulled up in my golf cart. Yep. So um, Steven here Correct. built this car and he's going to tell us about this thing. What is this? This is a Frankenstein build. Yeah, let's, let's get over it. Let's uh, have a look at it. So basically many people know R32 okay. Mark IV platform. R32 Mark IV right. platform. They call and it the Wookiee. Exactly. Car, right. Because right. it sounds like a Wookiee. Exactly. So, yeah. and I've had this car since 2007, I want to say, about this there. And uh, I started doing uh, track events and autocross pretty much right off the bed. And it was a stock car? In the stock then. configuration, right? Okay. And it didn't take a month or two until the interior was gutted, everything was out. And it just progressed from there on up until 2014 or so when I said, look, this platform, I took it as far as I can. I got to do something now. And one problem, big problem with the VW setups in general is that they put the engine entirely in front of the front axle, which makes them extremely nose heavy. And yeah, given originally had all wheel drive, that makes it a little better, but it doesn't cure the problem. So I've had a couple other cars that I built before. So I learned a lot about getting that weight in the center of the car. And that's what I decided to do. I'm like, okay, you replace the engine with this scoop? Yeah, that's the scoop, <laughs> right? So that just what ducks the, the uh, radiator air right out the hood. Oh, and th there's just so much going on yeah, here. Okay, we, so then where is the engine now? All right, let's, let's have a look here. I mean, what I can, the? if you really want, I'll open it up for you so you can see the engine. But it sits under this uh, cowl right here. That's basically where the engine sits. How do you... S Yes. Wait, you sit in the back seat now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wait. That's where that's where everything's happening, and it's really. How do you can how can you see out the windshield? So it's a very valid question. A lot of people ask that very same question. It's it's a matter of getting used to it just a little bit, but it's kind of like when you put a Formula One driver and they got the halo and they got this bar in front of them all of a sudden. Everybody's like, how in the world are they going to see? Well, it really doesn't bother you at all. And it's the same here. You get used to it so quick, you look around it. It's not a big deal. And wait, other... wait, what do you mean look around it? You're in the no, back no. seat. Yeah, this you, is, you, this you, is the true the definition seat. of a backseat driver. Right. Like, but you, then you can't put the seat any further back. No. Because th there's, a, there's like a hump here. Yeah, so the hump that houses the rear structure, right? The subframe with the yeah. rear differential that sits under there. And that's actually a Ford 8.8 .8 independent rear. I am so blown away. What, what's, what's cool is the hoop that's supposed to protect you in a rollover is yeah. in the back. So I have two hoops. So okay. I put one here and I put a one, another one in the front of myself. So I'm really uh, literally sitting inside the cage, right? Uh, I did not want to extend it all the way to the front, even though it ties into the strut towers in the front but there is not a halo over the windshield area where you normally see it, right? Because I figured- You don't need it. No, I, I figured I want the bars where I'm sitting. I see, so, okay. So then you can't have a bar go through I here. I do. So oh, you do? I have- It goes over the engine? Several, so I have another bar right here that goes from here to there. And you can see this cross here, the structure oh. there. There's a bar going over. And then you have a cross that connects here and here, which can be unbolted so that I can roll the engine out. Yeah, there's, there's a lot more stuff we have to kind of look into detail. This is just so <laughs> crazy. So Thank then you. do you fit into any sort of class for Time no, Attack? No, not at all. This is and just unlimited. Absolutely, this is, I do HPD 3 That's all I do. Because mainly I do this for fun. I do have a business where I do this kind of work, but I've always done this for fun. I don't take myself too serious and uh, I just want to be out there, have fun. You're just pushing this platform yes. beyond. W w oh my God, I'm looking at this side mm -hmm. and you look, if you look yes. to the left, yep. you're looking out the rear window yes. clearly. <laughs> and look at this cage design. Yes, so I, oh. you know, there's a bar here, there's another bar going down. Wait, and so this you, is all integrated into the car structure because obviously there's a tube frame under all this, right? The whole bottom floor is cut out and a new structure is put in. So 
for the engine transmission and everything else. So then do you put a window here or are you yeah, you're so not allowed to? You know, no, so for some, where I used to do it a lot in California, they would let me have the window in all the time, no big deal. Everybody knew me, I was always with the same host, you know, track day hosts. So everybody knew it and they're like, yeah, you're fine. Um, now here that I'm new here, nobody knows me. They kind of said, well, you got to do something because how are they going to know point price, right? And I said, that's cool. I'll just take the window out. So that's my new thing now. It comes out. I just... And then how do you get in? So the normal door still opens. Yeah, it still opens. And then, but then I, I'll show you. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. Look, I want to see this. Very simple. This is... <laughs> there you go. It's not that big of a deal. It's a, you know, it's tight, but not tighter than in many other cars. And the, and the pedals are yep. where the normal seat uh, Yeah, exactly. Mount, right? This is mm -hmm. where the seat yep. would normally Pretty mount. Pretty much, you're right. So there would be your seat rails would be here. And that's it. The only thing left in here are the rocker panels. I, it's also crazy to me that the reservoirs, you extended it to this point, like yeah. this far back. Yeah, and I had them in a couple different locations, but everyone was a pain to deal with. And I figured, you know what? They made these for a reason. And that's so you can lay them up here, they're high, and there where you can see them. Bleeding brakes here between sessions or anything is a bliss. Oh, <laughs> because you can literally just fill it up as you're pushing the pedal. Well, I, I do it with a pressure bleeder, yeah. but it's just as easy. I put yeah. the pressure bleeder on and you see what you're doing while you're opening the I just noticed something, your rear view mirror yeah, is that's, right here. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's just an extra. I can see my side mirrors on the doors, uh -huh. but it's 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 a bit weird because you're not sitting close enough to them. So I figured, you know what, I'll put one here. I can always look there. So does it does it feel a little weird when this does get sideways because you're so far, you're almost sitting on the back So axle. here here is what I tell everybody. When you look at this car, the back rest of my seat here to the front bumper is the exact same different uh, distance as in a BMW Z3. Mm. Exact same. It just looks goofy because the windshield is so far forward. God. Right? And when you look at this Z3, for example, it's pretty much the same. You're sitting on the rear tire. Right. Very close to a, uh, a Viper as well. They kind of all have this long front end and you sit kind of far back. Doesn't appear that way because they're short coupes, right? Ah. Yeah. And then, okay, so the shifter is here. Yeah, so we're running a Magnum T56 built by RPM Transmissions. Um, so it is still H pattern. It's still H pattern, and uh, you that's a what is duct. This? So this is the vent duct. I have fans in here that actually evacuate the hot air out of this engine bay. Because as oh, you can imagine, it gets pretty hot under here. So that air gets pushed out right there. So neat. And yeah. then what is this material That's for? fire blanket with a fire pad inside and then you have alum aluminum panels under this with yet another layer of fire protection underneath so <laughs> basically this is your firewall right, right. And you want to make sure that this is closed up uh, oh this is so and your gauges are all yeah, the way up here old style yeah that's an old style gauge that my brother gave to me many years ago and i said i can use that i'll make that work jeez yeah. this is just so beyond uh, I mean, it's more, it's, it's easier to point out what's stock versus what's modified because yeah. everything is modified. Yeah, yeah, it's, there's not much lift. So then, is it still all wheel drive? No, so it's purely rear wheel drive and I could have tried the all wheel drive version, but I figured it would add so much more complexity to it and so much more work, I did not want to get into it. I, this was a big project already as it was, and I figured, you know what, stay away from that, make it a little easier on yourself. And it works perfectly fine. Crazy. Yep. That and is then, just something else. So then, how long would it take for us to be able to look at the engine bay? Does it take a long minutes, time? Minutes, two minutes. Oh, can, oh yeah. can we do that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm gonna get my uh, yeah. uh, All screw right. I'm gonna open it up. I'm so excited yeah. to see this. I, I am genuinely shocked. And this is the best part about this culture that we love so much. And this is why I love coming to events like Hyperfest, because you see these builds and you did it just for yourself, for no Absolutely. other reason. No other reason. No, just, just, just for, for myself. yourself, just to prove that you yep. can do it. One day, I, that's exactly what I said. One day I said to myself, you know what? I can do this. I will you, do this. You, you just said, I'm just going to build the craziest yep. 
R32 possible. That's right. And you did it. Ah. I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it's a lot, it's a painful process. Anyone who has ever built anything knows how many issues come with this. This is not an easy road. Like even now, it's not 100% perfect. There are still things that I would do different, but it's getting to uh, where I can say, yeah, oh, you know what? It's a ton of fun now and it actually lets me do what I want to do with it, so. You know, it's interesting also to me that for how modified it is, you look at it from the outside, it's unmistakable of what it is. Yes. You know, it, it still has the correct shape. Okay, so now we're seeing a little more of the structure as well as the engine itself. Mm -hmm. Whoa, that, that uh, setup is crazy. So, so it's not the stock motor anymore. No, this is an LS1 turbo engine. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I was, that's, that was my next That question. was one of the yeah. downfalls of this engine. I mean, as nice as they are, and we all know they sound amazing, mm -hmm. but <laughs> compared to today's engines that you get in any, you know, any four cylinder modern engine is practically a better engine. Understood. Just, yeah. you know, when we're honest with ourselves, you can't beat the sound, of course, that's always great. You got it down, look at this. Yeah, you can imagine I've done this a couple of times. Right, right. And usually when I do this, is not a good sign. Because <laughs> I don't want to be in here. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. No, it's good. For this reason, oh, I'm happy to do it. I'm, I'm just happy. honestly curious, just of course for the viewers, but for myself, it's just so cool to see yep. this setup. All right, now you get a little bit of view of what's... So then the 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 headers face forward. Yeah, so I have forward or facing the, headers, correct. The Or the exhaust manifold. Yeah, yeah. Because exactly, it's yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, and it's a, you know, very simple header, which I'm gonna have to change now again. Exhaust wise, there's some of the things I need to change to my back pressure. I can see the original floor. Yes, correct. So the rocker panel. Uh -huh all the way to here integrates, right? But everything from here on up is old, is, is gone. I love that the motor mounts are right here. Yeah. Where that, the seat rail would pre pretty much be. Yep. So yeah, you can imagine that was one of the very first things in the setup of the car to place the engine where it needs to be for the perfect weight. Once I had that balance, I'm like, okay, it needs to go here. So then when you say perfect weight, how much does it weigh? So it weighs a total of uh, 3,184, 3,184 pounds, and it has a spot on weight distribution. You have 25.1 on this wheel, I think, 24.9 on that, and so on. So we're right at 25% on each wheel. How did you get it so close? Well, because I had the, you know, I had the, pos the, the ability to just put the engine wherever I needed, and once that was set, every other component, like the water tank, fuel tank, everything else was just put in a place where, okay, look at the scales, you know, mm. and build it from there. Okay, so then this is, what is this that, water This for? is for water. my cool suit, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I put ice and water in there. It's just right, because it cool gets suit. hot in here. It does get quite warm. Even I mean, with all this? Not it's... hotter than in any other car, really. Uh -huh. It just gets hot. Right, I see the intakes, and there's even fans in there that yeah, take. Yeah, exactly, so they evacuate the hot air from the cowl mm -hmm. out here, all right, because, I, need to get rid of that heat under there. You also have another dash Yeah, here. so here's, a, that's a funny, fun fact. I only put this in for one reason. There's one track in California, especially, uh -huh. at Button Willow, where yeah. they would have us line up against a pit wall, backwards, right? So we would have to back up on against the pit wall. And every time I did this, I could not look behind me. I'm like, I'm blind. I don't know how far I can go. So I figured, you know what, put a cheap just, camera on there. It's just a backup camera. Exactly. I don't really need it anymore because here it's, it's all different. Right. But in California, was it actually two tracks where you need something to see in the yeah. back. And usually my buddies would always help me, you know, they would, yeah, you're right. good, you're good. But right. I'm like, no, I, I got to see something. Yeah, so then, yeah, we have. Okay, then now let's talk about the front sure. end a little bit. Sure. So then wheel and tire combo as big as you can fit on yeah. this thing. Right. So I had to make a slight modifications to get the 295 in here. And one of them is find a coilover that will fit in there with the spring. So this is a uh, a bit sign coilover, 
but I put different springs in it with a higher rate, first of all, and that allowed me to pull the perch higher up, and so it wouldn't interfere with the tire. And then, yeah, you can see, amazingly enough, the rotors are stock rotors. Because VW, on the R32, had the wise side to say, hey, we need to do a little bit of brake, and they're semi-floating. They're not a complete floating rotor, but semi. And then put Porsche brakes on it. You know, those are uh, 996 turbo brakes. Yeah. And they do the job on the front. That works pretty good. I mean, to be honest, I could have more. Yeah. But then again, uh, you know, there's, there's a point where I say no more. Wow. Yeah. yeah so no. then the look at this turbo setup, just yeah. replacing the headlight. Yes, that was also, it, it lent itself because it was a perfect spot. The VW here has a kind of flat spot under there where you can perfectly mount that turbo. I'm like, yeah, it fits pretty good. It's high enough to feed the oil bag. So then how much power does this make? So it makes 750 horsepower to the wheel, 820 foot-pounds, and it does all that at 4,200 RPM. So at 52, I'm shifting. And you, there's no need to go any further than 5,200 5, RPM because at that point, you're out of the power band. It's better to get in the next gear. Jeez. And then oil cooler here? Oh, that's actually power steering. So oh, power we have steering. a bunch of coolers. We have three more radiators under there. Oh. Right? And uh, I mean, we could take this out if you wanted to and see what all the cooling is. So we have turbo wastegate cooler, we have an oil cooler, and we have an additional radiator for the engine coolant. This is, is this That's the, the radiator for the engine. Okay, this mm -hmm. is for the engine. Yep. Got it. Correct. And then we have in front of that, we have the intercooler, of course. Ah. Yep. And does it stay pretty cool? So on a day like this, I can keep it in temperature check pretty good. When we go out later, I'll probably have to kind of start letting it cool down a little bit. Um, but I can manage. It's, it's manageable. If it gets hotter, like in the mid 80s, that's why I say, yeah, you know, a lap or two and I have to cool, cool it down. It cools down quick. But if you stay on it, especially on this back straight there, you're going six gear full bore and for like 30 seconds. So then uh, have you been to this track before? Yeah, I've been on this track rather recently, but it's, it's a short experience here because I've just moved back to North Carolina. Mm -hmm. We're an hour and a half from here. Mm -hmm. And I basically went on this track the first time last year in October, I want to say. I'm curious to see what this can do on this Yeah, track. so this is another, this is a thing, and I'll be brutally honest with it, as crazy as this car is, it's certainly not the fastest. Sure, it is on the straights, yeah. But in the turns, there's tons of cars that are actually faster than me. And I don't make a big deal out of it. This is just what it is. I'm driving a Mark IV yeah. platform, so what right. do you want, right? <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, it's not the fastest, but it can hold its own. And typically, I get away from everybody because of the straights here. So I have got plenty of cushion. That is so neat. So then arrow wise, this is really cool. This um, was, in fact, it was more like an emergency solution here. Mm. I got the new wheels and tires uh, three days before track event in California. I put them on there, they didn't fit. Mm. So I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do now? Well, cut it out. So I cut everything out and put these on on a Friday night, Saturday morning, we went to the track and I left it like that. You got some lacta ducts to bring in fresh air. This is uh, them, from or? an older kind oh. of setup. Oh, okay. I used to have air go in here. Uh, ah. that again. Yeah. I figured at the time I can pressure feed with knocker ducts here and on the other side into the air area there, but it wouldn't do as well. It wasn't enough. Got it. It's, it this setup is way better. Yes, that, that takes out a lot of cubic feet, right? Air. So the rear. Yeah, as I said, rear end is a 8.8 .8 independent rear Ford. But, but like, what is it? R32 axles still? No, and how? no. So they're custom axles that come off the 8.8 .8 differential made by Drive Chef Chop. Thank you guys, by the way. They helped me big time because I broke another axle last uh, four weeks ago or so. And I needed an axle really quick and they turned around within days and had it good for me. So thank you very much. Um, yeah, so it's a... Independent rear suspension, 8.8 .8 Ford differential. It's all aluminum. Then you have uh, the custom axles. The outer hubs are actually VW, which is kind of a little bit one of the weak points, but I've had a guy in Arizona make bearings for it, and it's been good ever since knock on wood. So 
it takes it time. This is, the wiring is so insane, how neat it is and yeah. how that, it, it just sits right behind. Right, and, and there's reason for all this, right? Uh -huh. It's the third iteration of the wiring. Yeah. And in this third time, I was like, you got to do this better so you can serve this easily without getting in too much trouble at the track, for example. If something is going on and you have to dig into wiring and fuse boxes and whatnot, it's always terrible. This is easy. Take the plastic off. It's right there. Right. It's very clear. You can see if any fuses popped or anything yep, like that. Yep, exactly. And then, so is this the fuel tank? So the fuel tank is underneath this. This is basically a... Uh, a firewall kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not in the in the driver's compartment. Got it. And it sits right under there. Wow. What a car. And is this the fire that's, system? No, that's actually the wing. So the wing is Wait, not... Wait, it gets crazy? Yeah, it does get a little crazy. It's not exactly active aero, but what it is is air brake. So the wing can go into this complete stall here and create a lot of drag, right? And then it goes back down. So, yeah, cheater mode. Wait a minute. <laughs> yes. So then, does the air push it up? No. Oh yeah, the air pushes. So the pneumatics air, push it up. Air push it up, and then push it up, and then and they push it down too. It oh. goes both ways. Yeah. So there's a sensor on the steering column. If you saw that, the wing will only go into its brake position if I'm straight steering and on the brakes. If I turn my steering wheel into a turn, I want downforce, right? So in a turn the wing comes back down. So as soon as I turn. Is there any variance or is it just full? No, it goes full in, full out. Okay. I'm working on a fully active arrow that's a little different controlled, not with pneumatics. That's gonna be out probably next time when I'm, I'm that close to having it done. So when you come in, you have to fill up air? Yeah, so basically these bottles, people know them from paintball, right? Yeah, okay. It's a so paintball bottle, CO2. I have a, yep, exactly. Okay, got so it. I have a charger at home, you know, uh -huh. a charged bottle, just push, the, and then you see the wing when I give it a little air. Wow! All right. It's that fast, too. It's that fast, yeah. That is so neat. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Yeah. And then the underbody is all flat, too? Yeah, so this flat bottom until about mid-chip, right? Okay. Um, goes from here to, yeah, as I said, about mid-chip is flat bottom, and then the front is open to allow access to the uh, transmission and the engine. It's, it's also interesting to me what you've kept and what you've changed. Yeah. Like, you have, like, this is still metal. Oh, yeah. That's still metal. And and the roof is even still metal. Yeah. The, cha the, the body of the car is basically the way it was. And I kind of wanted to make that a point because I love the Mark IV R32 look. I just love it. That's why I did it with this car in the first place. I did not want to lose my car over this. but. The body looks just fantastic. I love this thing. This is the craziest looking. I, I just, I can't believe how insane this is. Yeah. It even has a stock mirrors. Yeah, this, the mirrors are stock, yeah. So I had to. Yeah, that's you just. You cut all of this out. I cut all for the, the door, right all the bars. Obviously, I have my own cage. I don't need the uh, crash structure in the doors anymore. So they're really <laughs> out of skin, basically. Wow. So making your way to Like a train, it's like yes, choo -choo. Yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah, that's that's the really the thing of the choo choo here. Yeah, wow, yeah. what a car! People always ask me, How is it that I get surprised all the time? Yeah, and I still do every single time I pick up my camera, I get surprised. Yeah, that's good, that's a good thing, right? I mean, we love that, and I mean, that's it's legitimately unlimited. Yes, it is, you know? and, and even me. You would think, oh yeah, he, he does all this. I'm still looking at other people's projects. I'm like, man, this is awesome. The world we live in, right? It's inspiring. In times, it really is. And yeah. today, everything, I've had so many conversations here. 
it is so much easier to get into it and learn. Because we have Google, we have YouTube. When I first started all this, you had to literally go and get a book, read on how to learn the world and all these things. It's so much easier today and it makes it more accessible. And sure enough, as you know well, there are so many more people doing crazy things now. This isn't even that crazy anymore. It really isn't. I see stuff out there, I'm like, man, that's kind of cool. Really nice. What, what's that logo on here? So, <laughs> credit to my brother, he yeah. came up with this. So basically, it's a combination of NATO flag code. Well, let's talk okay. about it, right? Yeah. So, as you may know, Morse code is three long, short long, right? So that stands for S. The flag white and blue is a NATO letter flag, and it means also S. The same goes here. That's Morse code B. And the red flag here is the letter B. So that stands for SB, which are my initials, Stephen ah. Burstall. We in our family have them. My brother has the same kind of flag, but different colors, of course, for his name. And then we have it for all the kids and stuff. And that's how it started. And I thought it was so cool. I used it for my business as well. So is that what it's called? So R59 Automotive is my business. Ah. R59, I named this car because it was an R, no longer a 32 because it was by engine size 3.2 liter. I went to 5.9 liter, so I call it R59. Little did I know, short time later, the uh, minis came around and their chassis code is actually R59, <laughs> but nobody uses it, so it's all good. Yeah, but now I'm also started a uh, business with a good friend of mine as partner, and that's R59 Automotive. Hmm. So, oh, we'll so there. that's what you are doing that's here? That's what I'm doing here in uh, North Carolina. Yep. That's your full-time gig? That's my full-time gig. You just now. build cars, yep. help so, people out with their car Absolutely, builds. exactly. And that's, I, like I said, I learned this all for myself, by myself, but doing it so long, my good friend had the idea and he actually said, look, you should do this as a business. Why not try it? And this is the best advertising for your That's, for that's your exactly, skill, yeah, it really what you're is. Able it's, to a, do. it's a great tool. It's a great tool. So cool. Well, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. We'll get some thank, shots of you on yeah, track. Absolutely, thank yeah. you very much. Thank uh, you, I, I appreciate I, uh, it. I'm so glad my guys came up running to me frantically. Yeah. Like they were on fire or something. Yeah, yeah. Like they they're were. like, hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, I met them, yeah, really yeah, cool, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, were, very they nice. were going very crazy. Nice. Yeah, so. I'm glad that worked out. I appreciate it as well. It's, awesome. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much.